Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem reverse string. I was debating whether I should even solve this or not, but since it's part of the daily challenge, let's just go ahead and do it. And it's actually a very good problem to solve, especially if you're a beginner, because there's actually multiple ways to solve this problem. Now the funny thing is that the easiest way to solve it is actually the most efficient, especially when it comes to space. But there are a couple different solutions and to be honest, if you were asked this in an interview, I imagine your interviewer might want you to actually come up with a couple of the other solutions as well. It would be kind of funny if you solved it with O of one space, but the interviewer was like, okay, but can you do it in O of n space? But who knows, that might happen. So we're given an input string, but it's actually given as an array. And the reason that's important is because if you were actually just given a single string and you had to reverse the characters in it, that wouldn't be very efficient actually because in most languages, when you swap characters in a string or even just reassign a single character, it's actually a big O of N operation because it actually has to rebuild the entire string. So the fact that we're given a array is definitely more efficient because it's more efficient to swap positions in an array. Now, when you think of reversing something, you probably think of taking the beginning of it putting it at the end, taking the end of it and putting it at the beginning. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. That's exactly how we're gonna solve this problem. Take the first position, put it at the end, take the last, put it at the beginning and then repeat that. Now this is pretty messy. So let's look at a larger example. So we know what we're trying to do. We're gonna take these uh, values, swap them together then take the next couple values, swap them, and then keep doing that. But how do we know when to stop? Well, what's either going to happen is if the string is of odd length, we're gonna have a single character in the middle. Now we don't really need to swap this because if we do, we'll pretty much just be putting it back where exactly where it is. Now, if we had though an even number of characters, we would swap these two, then we would swap these two, then we wouldn't really have anything left to swap. So then we would also know that we're done. But how exactly are we gonna implement this with the code? Well, since we're given an array, we can have a couple pointers. And by pointers, I mean integers to represent the index that we're at. We're gonna have a left pointer and a right pointer. The left pointer is gonna be initially at index zero. The right pointer is gonna be at the last index. So we're going to swap these two. So we're gonna put the O here, H here. And we're gonna take that left pointer now, increment it to be over here, and take the right pointer, decrement it to be over here. Then we're gonna swap these two values. We put the L at the beginning, we put the E at the end. And then we're gonna be left here. Now we could swap this, but we don't actually have to. Because even though I kind of drew it as a separate array, we're actually gonna be doing these swaps in place. So this is not a separate array. This is the same array. So even if we don't do anything with this value, there's still gonna be that L over here. So then in place, we're gonna have the reverse string. So we definitely didn't need any extra space. Okay, so now let's code up this solution. And by the way, the time complexity is gonna be big O of N because we're just iterating through the entire string where the string is gonna be of size N. The space complexity is gonna be zero or big O of one because we're not really using any extra space. So we're gonna have two pointers. Left is gonna be at the beginning. Right is gonna be all the way at the end. So the length of the array minus one. We're gonna keep continuing while our two pointers have not met each other or crossed each other. Just like we did in the drawing, then we're just gonna swap the two characters. Now in most languages, you'll probably need a temporary variable to do this, but in Python, you can actually do it in one line. So we can just reassign two variables at the same time simultaneously. It's not like it's gonna execute this before it executes uh, this assignment. They'll happen simultaneously, which is exactly what we want to do. And the last thing, don't forget to update our pointers. So we're going to increment the left pointer and decrement uh, the right pointer. And then we don't actually have to return the string because uh, we're just supposed to modify it in place. So I ran it. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work. But now let's take a look at a couple other solutions. So there's actually a slightly clever way to do this with another data structure. Now it's probably less intuitive to come up with this and it's also less efficient because we're gonna need a stack. So that's automatically gonna be big of N memory complexity because we're gonna potentially add all of these characters to the stack. But the algorithm itself is actually very simple. We're just gonna go character by character, adding each character to the top of the stack. So first we add the uh, H, then we add the E, then we add the L, the second L, and then we add the last character, the O. 
And then uh, you know a, data, a stack data structure to remove elements, you can only remove from the top. But notice what we kind of did. We already reversed the string. The only problem is it's on the stack and we actually want it to be in the string. So we're gonna pop from the top of the stack, the O, and we're gonna take the first position of our string and replace it with an O. Then we're just gonna keep doing that. Pop the L, the L over here, replace the E. I get the second L uh, over here, get the E, put it over here, and then get the last character, the H, put it over here. So as you can see, we did reverse the string. Pretty easy to do, now let's code it up. Okay, so let's first initialize our stack to just be empty. The first phase of the algorithm is just going through every single character in the string from left to right, and then pushing it on top of our stack. That was pretty straightforward. And then we're gonna start at the beginning of string S. So we're gonna have a pointer, uh, I equals zero. And what we're gonna do is just go through every single character that we pushed to our stack and then pop from the top of the stack and take that value and then assign it to the beginning of the string at index I. And then we're just gonna keep repeating this until the stack is empty, but don't forget to increment your I pointer. So as you can see on the left, yes, it works and it's also very efficient, but it does take extra space. So it's good to understand kind of the trade-offs and be able to explain this in a real interview. So the last way to solve this is also going to be big O of n space complexity because we're going to need recursion and recursion takes extra space on the call stack. And the way we're going to use recursion is actually very simple. We know what we're doing with the uh, iterative algorithm where we have two pointers is first we're just reversing these two characters. And then we know that we still have the remainder of the string in the middle, not including these two characters. We still have to reverse this portion. So what we're saying is this is the sub problem. So to do this recursively, you have to think of sub problems. So we're going to have a recursive method. We're going to pass into two values left and right, which are going to be just the left and right pointers, which are going to define the sub problem that we're currently at. Initially, we're going to be trying to reverse the whole string, but what we're going to do is reverse these two and then say, okay, we still have the sub problem. So go ahead and do that recursively by passing in the new pointers into that. And similarly to the iterative solution, we're gonna keep doing that basically as long as our left pointer is less than our right pointer. If that's no longer the case, then we pretty much know we did reverse the entire string so we can go ahead and stop. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. So let's create a recursive function. I'm just gonna define it inside of the function so then we don't have to pass in our string to it because since this function is, is defined inside of this one, it'll automatically have access to the outer variables. So we just pass in the left and right pointers. So pretty much exactly the same as our iterative solution, while the left pointer is less than our right pointer, we're gonna do the recursive step. But if it wasn't the case, then out here, we would do nothing, we would just return. But you don't even have to put a return statement, at least in Python, so I'm not gonna do that. But what we are gonna do is just go ahead, take the left and right characters and then swap them. And then instead of incrementing and decrementing our left and right pointers, we're actually just gonna recall the recursive function and then passing in the new left and right pointers. So instead of doing a while loop, we're kind of doing the exact same thing, just that we're doing it recursively, but it's less efficient because we're using space from the recursive call stack. And the last thing to do is don't forget to actually call your recursive function or nothing's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and pass in zero for the left index initially and the length of the string minus one as the last index. So as you can see on the left, yes, it does work, but it seems like it's less efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. I hope you kind of understand the different solutions. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.